So on May 31, 2016, I'll be concluding my 35 years in Citrus County. And as I share with you, reflections of that and advice to offer in this closing, it's almost like standing at your own eulogy and talking about who you were, what you did, and then advising those who are sitting in pews in that church uh, what to do. So there's awkwardness to this, but I really do want to say, first of all, thank you to all of the teachers, staff, families, administrators who walked along this path with me, and it would be also with my wife, with our son, who was a student in our school district. So first and foremost, I think that we have a sense of collected commitment, kind of a collective sharing of all of us who feel strongly that students are the reason why we do the work that we do. I know that. My wife, we know that as parents, so for all of those who have been teachers, instructional leaders, and support staff of our son, thank you. For my wife and I in our roles as teachers, as school administrators, now in this district level position, to all staff, and again, the distinction that Citrus County has compared to my experience with other school districts, we don't draw the line or make a hierarchical division between someone who is a teacher or an administrator or paraprofessional or custodian. We all work together and, and that collectiveness that I referenced earlier is what I think defines who we are. The other piece that I recall and, and, and it will stay forever with me is that while we have this collective commitment, we also have a collective caring. I am astounded by the selflessness of our teachers, of our school leaders, of our families in terms of a willingness to help others, to help those who are struggling learners, to help those who are economically disadvantaged. So again, that collective caring is really what makes the distinctive success of Citrus County even above all others. And I leave you with, most recently we did a study of all of 67 counties in Florida, and not just looking at how those counties did with all state assessments, graduation rates, persistence after they go on to college, but also what defines the county in terms of economic structure. So we looked at poverty rates, poverty rates of all, poverty rates of the children, the degrees awarded by those living in Citrus County, those who have bachelor's degree, a percent. So when you look at that list, you can see the top school district in the state of Florida is St. John's County academically. Interestingly enough, St. John's County has 9% poverty. So they are an A school district. Okay, so Citrus County is also an A school district, but when you look at the poverty, and I'm not referring to free reduced lunch, I'm referring to even broader than that, the poverty of the children that live in our county between the ages of five and 25, we're over 60%. So 9% compared to 60%, St. John's an A school district, Citrus County an A school district. So out of the 67 counties in terms of poverty, we're 60 out of 67, yet we are the highest achieving district in those economically disadvantaged communities. I think that only happens when you have great teachers, when you have powerful leaders, when you have a supportive school board, superintendent, and leadership teams at the district level that are willing to help all, and you have parents who care. And I know that sometimes we have parents who seem like they don't care or don't have the resources, but it could not happen without the collective commitment and caring of the staff here. So again, I want to say thank you. Uh, I, I feel blessed to have been walking the path through Citrus County Schools and Citrus County School District. I think I worked in 12 of our schools, and for those principals, assistant principals, teachers and teams of those schools in particular, thank you. And for all of my colleagues, uh, I am grateful and know that there will be a time that I'll come back to try to help out in any way.